Hi, we will start this video by refining the model grid. The grid screen provides a complete assortment of graphical tools for refining the model grid, delineating inactive grid zones, importing layer surface elevations, assigning elevations, optimizing the grid spacing, and contouring the layer surface elevations. The reason for refining the grid is to get more detailed simulation results in areas of interest or in zones where you anticipate steep hydraulic gradients. For example, if drawdown is occurring around the well, the water on the table will have a smoother surface if you use a finite grid spacing. Also, layer properties can be assigned more correctly on a finite grid. So to start refining the grid in the X direction, we go to Edit Grid and from there Edit columns. Edit grid. Edit columns. Okay, this window will appear showing the option we have for editing the grid columns. Okay, we select refine by and leave the value as it is. Notice that a highlighted vertical line follows the location of the mouse throughout the, the, the model grid. This line may be used to add a column at any location within the model domain. In this exercise, we will refine the model grid in a refueling area near the water supply wells and around the discontinuous aquitard border. We click anywhere within the blue background to activate the model domain. We have a set of X coordinates that we have to enter, but do not worry if you cannot hit the exact values. Okay? Simply we have to click on the column clauses to this number. For region 1, we have X equals to 670. So as we move, we have here the value of X. So it's this one. Then x number 2, which is 940. So this is 940. The next point is 1140. The next region, we have x equals to 1340. And the next point is one six zero zero. Okay, now we have refined three regions. This is number one, number two, and number three. After refining columns, we refine rows by edit rows and refine by. We have the first point y equals to 400. So we go to y equals to 400. This is the closest one. And the next point is y equals to 730. Okay. For region 2, we have y equals to 860. And y equals to 930. The third region y equals to 1660 and y equals to 1130. And the last region we have y equals to 1660. And the last point is 1860. Okay, so we have refined four regions in the y axis. To see them clearly, we disable the map. From here, 
uncheck this checkbox and apply then OK. At this moment I'll show you how to view the model in a cross section. We simply go to view column and as we notice here as we move the cursor along the map each column is highlighted so to select one column just left click on it okay as you see here this is just the cross section of the column visual model flow transfer the screen display from plan view to a cross sectional view of the model grid at this point the model has no vertical exaggeration and the cross section will appear as a thick line with the three layers barely discernible to properly display the three layers, you'll need to vertically exaggerate the cross section from F8 that is shown here. A vertical exaggeration window appears prompting us for a vertical exaggeration value. For example, we type 40. So the three layers of the model are now displayed as shown. If the shown layer is just one, we can add the two other layers from edit grid, edit layers, add, and at 12, one, and at six, the another one. Now we have the three layers. In this example, we will import text files containing elevation data for selected X and Y coordinates within the model domain. So we import elevation from here this wizard allows us to import and interpolate a data set to the model grid for each of the selected model layers by default the layer surface field the ground surface is the selected layer from the options here select import data this option is used to select a data file and an interpolation method for example the natural neighbors cranking or inverse distance by default the interpolator field natural neighbors is selected however for this example we use the inverse distance we click on the folder icon to select the data source field and now we have to select the ground surface topography data file. And this is the required file. Tutorial files can be downloaded from the link attached in the description box. We type here one to make column 1 for x coordinate, 2 to make column 2 for y coordinates, and column 3 for elevation. Then we click on next. Since no invalid entries are detected, it ensures that the data set contains valid data and that data points are located within the model domain. Now we click on finish. Now we click on OK and this window will appear. Now we click on OK. Now we will import the surface elevations for the bottom of layer 1. From import elevations we select bottom of layer 1 and from here we import data and also we use invert distance and from here we select this one this file now we match columns for directions one y direction two and elevation three next finish and we can
and OK. Next, we will import the surface elevations for the bottom of layer 2 and layer 3. The same steps also, import elevation, this window, bottom of layer 2, and from here, import data, inverse, and our file is B2. One, two, three. And we select model and meters, then OK. Click on apply. OK. Now we do the same steps for layer three. Now we do the same steps for layer 3, bottom of layer 3, and from here import data, inverse distance, and our file is this one. Then we have 1, 2, 3, the next, and finish, and then model meters, OK, apply. Finally, we click on. Finally, we click on OK. Now we have came to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. Please do not forget to subscribe, like, and share. Bye.